we continue here on the Guy Benson Show, we were just mentioning New York and Texas. Let's go ahead and talk about Florida as well. Because I think we all know that Florida has been in the spotlight politically because the governor of Florida is seen as a political threat. Hence the relentless program and project of demonization of Ron DeSantis that we have covered and chronicled and reacted to and fact-checked on this show over and over again. There's a new one out there that we'll, uh, we'll get to here in just a second. But first, I want to draw your attention to a new poll out of Florida. This is from USA Today in Suffolk, and they asked Florida voters about the upcoming midterm elections. And let's just say that things aren't looking great for the Democrats in the state of Florida. President Joe Biden has a 39 percent approval rating in Florida, which is about right. We've seen a few national polls having Biden at 39 percent or so. And Florida is a large, diverse swing state. So it would make sense that his job approval would be roughly as bad there, maybe a little worse than it is nationally. Biden's personal favorability rating is underwater by 11 points in the state of Florida. So what about some head to heads looking at 2022, this election cycle? First of all, on the Senate side, Marco Rubio is up for reelection this year. And they've put uh, a woman named Val Demings up against him. And right now, Rubio is ahead by eight points in that race. Forty nine, forty one. Maybe it'll tighten like this thing's going to ebb and flow. But Rubio is a very heavy favorite to win reelection, being up by eight in Florida is a pretty significant deal. Now, on the governor's side, you've got a few Democrats who would like to be the nominee against Governor DeSantis. You have Charlie Crist, who's the former governor, member of Congress. He ran for Senate and failed. He is this shapeshifter who believes nothing. He has run for statewide office in Florida as a Republican, as an independent, and as a Democrat. And I think for this race, he's got his magic eight ball and he shook it up. What am I going to be today? And it's Democrat. So you've got Charlie Crist means uh, or believes absolutely nothing. Imagine believing so little that you run for statewide office under three different party labels, depending on what you think your personal ambition might be helped by at any given moment. It's actually almost impressive in terms of its sheer cynicism and selfishness. And he's probably going to get uh, gerrymandered or redistricted out of existence in his House seat. He's currently a Democrat, so now he's going to run for governor. He trails DeSantis by six points in this poll. Then you've got Nikki Freed, who is the current agriculture secretary, but she's just sort of like one of these Twitter trolls. She's the one who recently compared Ron DeSantis to Hitler said DeSantis reminds her a lot of Hitler. Maybe she and Whoopi Goldberg can go to remedial history class together or something. But that's what she said. She's supposedly like the leading serious candidate on the Democrat side. She believes every conspiracy theory. She amplifies every nonsense attack on Ron DeSantis, even stuff that gets instantly debunked. She was a hype woman for that crazy person, Rebecca Jones, right, the career criminal who's been out there lying constantly about Florida manipulating the data. It's all untrue. It's all been debunked. But because it was being used as a weapon against DeSantis, Nikki Freed recklessly amplified all of it. I don't know if she ever does her day job. Has she ever done anything about agriculture in Florida? It seems like all she does is sit on Twitter and lob insults at Ron DeSantis. How's that going for her? In this poll, it's DeSantis 51, Nikki Freed 40, DeSantis up 11. Ron DeSantis is the only statewide or national figure in the state of Florida that in this poll is above 50 percent on favorability rating. He's plus 10, 52, 42. And as I said, he leads his would be Democratic opponents by a range of six to 11 points. So I tell you this not because it's dispositive, not because polling at this stage really matters a lot, although we are in the election year. 
Right? These are not good signs for the Democrats. I read you these polling numbers mostly just in case there are any members of the media listening, because I'd like to give them a sad because they have tried so hard. I know you guys have tried so hard against Ron. I know. And it has to be really, really sad to see the people of Florida not falling for it. Sorry. But that's what's happening so far. And it brings me great joy. Even as someone who is not necessarily in every way, shape or form, a giant Ron DeSantis stan. I like him. I think he's done a good job. I mostly talk about him because of the insane attacks against him. And we'll get to another one here, as I've now teased in just a moment. I do want to say this one thing before we move on from the USA Today poll out of Florida, which, as I mentioned, has Biden at 39 percent approval. He's at 36 percent approval on the economy. So it's not going well. In fact, it's so ugly out there that they did a hypothetical poll in this survey of Democrats. If there were looking ahead to 2024, a primary where Hillary Clinton, where he brought back Crooked H and they had her run for the nomination and there was a primary in Florida, Crooked H would beat Joe Biden by three points in a Democratic primary for president right now. Based on this survey, that's how bad it is out there for Joe. Our esteemed president, there's another 2024 poll that's interesting. They polled what if in Florida, these are Florida voters, what if Donald Trump ran again and Ron DeSantis also ran and they were going head to head? Which one would you prefer be the Republican nominee for president? And it's pretty close. Trump is ahead by single digits. But DeSantis is is hanging in right there. And of course, he needs to get reelected first, but he could maybe build towards something bigger in the state of Florida. I also find the head to head less interesting than this. And this is the last data point that I'll share with you from the poll. They asked Florida voters, again, the largest, most diverse swing state in the country. If in 2024 there was a presidential election and it was Joe Biden on the ballot for the Democrats. Head to head against Ron DeSantis or head to head against Donald Trump. Who would you vote for? In a rematch, a 2020 rematch in 2024, Trump versus Biden. Trump leads Biden by three points, 47 to 44 percent in Florida right now. Ron DeSantis leads Biden by eight points, 52 to 44 percent right now. Long way to go, very early stages, but I do think that Republican voters need to think about viability in 2024. If Trump decides to run or if he's thinking about running, is he the best person to actually have a chance to win? I think Republicans have a chance to win big, potentially, in 2024. I think the candidate that would give them the best chance to do that is who Republican voters ought to be considering. That's a key calculation moving forward. Now, it's clear that the Democrats in the media view DeSantis as a threat, not just in 2022. They're going to try to beat him this year, but based on this and other surveys, that's going to be a heavy lift. That's not guaranteed that he's going to win re-election DeSantis, but, you know, he's in the driver's seat. At this point, what they are really scared about is the presidential cycle. If this guy can win, especially if he wins kind of big in the state of Florida and he racks up a bunch of victories and he's the type of candidate that can bring in an appeal to Trumpy Republicans and moderately Trumpy Republicans and Trump skeptical Republicans, if he can sort of coalesce everyone. That's something that they're worried about, and they are not telling us that with their words. They are telling us that with their actions. Attack after smear after lie about Ron DeSantis from the media and the Democrats working as a team, as they so often do. To me, it is very telling. Part of the reason that I have grown fonder of Ron DeSantis, who I don't think I've ever even met, 
is because of the way they attacked him. Uh, they attack him and continue to. The fear is palpable. They are trying to take him out, and they're doing it with such silliness and baselessness and hysteria that it has caught my attention, obviously, which is why we talk about it a lot here on the show. I think that performance in terms of, you know, governance, you could cite, for example, keeping Florida schools open last year, big decision. Governance is a feather in Ron DeSantis's cap right now. I would say that if he's able to pull it out, let's say he has a convincing victory in Florida, a crucial state, that would be another feather in his cap, especially if he's weathered the storm of all of these attacks. And then the attacks themselves from the left and from the press and the way that he's responded to them, that to me is another big plus, you know, sort of in the in the positive versus negative column when assessing Ron DeSantis as a political actor. Now, here's the latest thing that they're going to try to do with him. Apparently, and it's, it's so dumb. Apparently, there was a group of like neo-Nazi a-hole racists. There were like 11 of them or something. And they went on some overpass in Florida, I think somewhere in central Florida, and they were waving their Nazi flags. Can you imagine being such a loser that you wave the flag of a defeated, disgraced, genocidal regime? Like these are just extremely pathetic people representing a disgusting ideology. And there's 11 of them for a reason. Right? This is way out there on the fringe. So they were doing some hateful nonsense on an overpass. People saw it. There were, I guess, some flyers had been distributed at some point, And people were obviously and correctly upset about Nazis doing Nazi things. Because I think almost everyone can agree Nazis sort of like uh, along with like hardcore communists, those would be sort of the epitomes of evil that inflicted misery on humanity and killed millions of people. It's just awful. Doing anything in the name of that type of regime to me is horrendous and also sort of baffling. It's just like very sad loser people who were engaged in this stuff. And so this became a scandal because it happened in Florida. And it's like, well, why isn't Ron DeSantis out there denouncing this? So that became the drumbeat. Ron DeSantis won't denounce Nazis. Like, are you kidding? I don't think even Nikki Freed, even though she compares him to Hitler, I don't think even Nikki Freed believes that Ron DeSantis is interested in, like, winking at Nazis. But this is how desperate they are. So that's what they said. That's been one of the narratives. And it's been all over, you know, hashtagging and left-wing Twitter and that whole echo chamber. And so just to give you a sense of how mainstream this nonsense has gotten, Stephen Colbert, who runs his nightly group therapy for liberals on CBS, on his so-called comedy show last night, he was talking about this, and he made this point in Cut 15. Speaking of the worst people in public office, Florida governor and man describing what Adele's music means to him, Ron DeSantis, over the weekend, horrifically... There were a couple of Nazi rallies in Orlando. I assume they were trying to annex the Sudetenland Pavilion at Epcot. <laughs> now, this is terrible and the easiest thing in the world to condemn, unless you're Ron DeSantis, who remains silent. Okay, so he mentions DeSantis and the New York liberal crowd at their therapy session. They all boo together, bad boo. And then what? Colbert alleges is that there has been these Nazi rallies in Florida and DeSantis is silent and won't say anything. That was yesterday on Colbert's show. Problem for Colbert is not only is this not comedy and not funny and totally insipid, it's also factually wrong because the day before on Monday, DeSantis had condemned these people. He called them jackasses. He said they'd be held accountable. He also said that he wouldn't play along with the stupid left wing game this answer is part of the reason why I think that he's a skilled politician and popular on the right. Here was DeSantis the day before not being silent about this. So fact check there for Colbert on his comedy show. Cut 16, 
This was Monday, Governor DeSantis. These people, uh, these Democrats who are trying to use this as some type of political issue to try to smear me as if I had something uh, to do with it, we're not playing their game. You know, some jackasses, you know, doing this on the street. First of all, state law enforcement is going to hold them accountable because they were doing stuff on the overpass. Uh, so we're so they're absolutely going to do that, and they should do that. Uh, but I'm not going to have people try to smear me that belong to a political party that has elevated anti-Semites to the halls of Congress like Ilhan Omar, that have played footsie with the BDS movement, that even have people in their party that have cavorted with Farrakhan. Yeah, it's like, okay, guys, in your glass houses on anti-Semitism on the left, are you kidding? You're going to try to bootstrap this into a, an issue where it's totally non-existent? They were doing, I guess, stuff that was illegal up there. They're going to be held accountable. They're jackasses. Then he goes through, not just talking about the problems on the left with anti-Semitism, then, then he reflected on and contrasted that with his own record combating anti-Semitism in the state of Florida, point after point after point. And then he concluded with this, quote, so they tried to play games, talking about the Democrats, to try to politicize. Why would they do that? Why would they want to elevate half a dozen malcontents and try to make this an issue for political gain? Very good question. I think we all know why. It's gross. He responded to it well. Why would you elevate these people if not to try to pretend that there was a Nazi-related controversy involving a governor that you hate and you're scared of? That's your answer right there. And it's not just some weirdos on Twitter in Florida. It's comedy hosts on national television. Who are not only unfunny in this circumstance, but just flat wrong, which is lazy to boot. They keep coming after him. He keeps responding. He knows how to fight back. And that's part of the reason why they fear him and why we keep seeing this type of garbage flung in his direction. Batted away pretty effortlessly again by Governor DeSantis. We'll break. We'll come back on The Guy Benson Show. 